Servus. Marhaban. Hola. Hello. I'm inspired that there's so many people working to accomplish the same goal of creating a connected future. By having students lead clubs on campus directly supported by Google developers, that's the best way to reach out to students. It's really inspirational always to hear about members of the community who echo your values and echo your beliefs. I've been listening more than I've been speaking and I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing because I'm, I'm just getting all these ideas. Google, it needs to reach a wider audience and be more relatable as a company and I think Google is one of the brands that is very good at doing that. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, and uh, happy Thanksgiving to everybody who's joining in from the U.S. Um, I know it's uh, for some of you it's a long weekend, so thank you so much for taking the time off, and uh, and a special thank you to uh, even our speaker. So, um, welcome again for our DSC series, um, uh, where we bring in some special speakers. We're going to be running some workshops, as you can see. I mentioned a little early on the clip. Uh, we're doing a five-base series starting tomorrow, uh, led by some of our DSC leads. So super excited. If you have an RSVP, just join or subscribe to this channel. It will be automatically uh, alerted. Uh, I think tomorrow's session is just an introduction and setting things up on Firebase. So if you ever want to get to know how to put it uh, back in together, great series to join. Plus, if you haven't joined our Discord server, make sure to join that as well. The reason is if you run into any issues, if you want to ask us questions directly, all our authors, all our publishers, all our educators are going to be on the Discord server that you can ping and uh, get one-on-one -on -one help uh, during the sessions or when they have office hours. So that being said, we have an awesome session ses uh, set up for today uh, with uh, Alex, Alex Castillo. Um, he's a GDE Google Developer Expert, and he's the CTO and the co-founder of um, um, this uh, this awesome uh, hardware startup. Um, I saw him kicking things off a few years ago, and now uh, uh, they are even having they even have an open API for some of our developers to join and uh, start building applications. So I'm going to get him on stage, and I'm going to ask him a few questions and get him uh, kick started. So welcome, um, Alex. Hey, hi everyone. How are you doing, Medusha? Good, good, good. So last time we spoke, I think um, uh, you were based in New York. Uh, yes, uh, last week when I was talking to you, you said you were in Colorado. Or did you move or? Uh, yeah, so, you know, um, I was basically, when the pandemic started, uh, our office, you know, it was in Brooklyn, basically next to the park that was making the papers because of how many people that were there. Uh, things were a little hectic there, so we just drove to, uh, my girlfriend and I, we just drove to Colorado and we've been here enjoying the mountains and the wildlife here for a few yeah, years. Yeah, and it's, it's a good startup ecosystem too, I'm guessing. You probably get connected with people in tech stars and there's a few other interesting things happening there. Um, awesome. So um, tell us a little bit about you. I guess uh, I know you guys through our GDE program. Um, give us a little background. Uh, what does this startup mean to you and, and where's the industry going to go? I'm not going to go too much into it. I know you have a great presentation plan, but high level for anybody who's tuning in. Sure. So at Neurosity, we believe in empowering the mind. So you know, after being a web developer for 15 years and building the traditional applications, you know, that interact with the keyboard, with the mouse, um, recently, you know, more with voice um, and seeing also trends and friends and family of like mental illness um, and different type of things that all start in the brain. Uh, we set off to start working on a brain computer interface that captures the brain activity and pretty much um, allows you to detect different mental states so mm -hmm. yeah we are just seeing this future where we not only can help people understand themselves better because they can quantify their emotions and the way they feel but also they can be more autonomous and we don't have to assume what body features they have whether they yeah. can they have the opportunity to use a keyboard or not we just want to make this technology accessible for people to control the technology uh directly with their thoughts 
so so very quickly what level of what stage is your startup at um did you did you raise around uh, that you've obviously got product uh, market fit um there's some validation done uh, give us a little bit about a, a status yeah. update so quick we're mostly bootstrap um mm -hmm. um and we did raise initially a pre-seed round uh, to help us we're a hardware company of course that comes with certain yeah. costs but at this point it's been like two years and a half we, we've shipped uh two different models of our brain computer interface the notion one and the notion two uh and you know it's it's, it's been going really great we sold out both batches uh, mm -hmm. we're at a point that we cannot keep up with the demands so that we're working on the next batch for next year did you ever do anything like Kickstarter or Indiegogo or anything like that too? Because I mean, again, this is a hardware company and this is the first time I yeah. came across somebody who actually bootstrapped, got product market fit to a certain extent and then got some validation going. Like any any high level, like how did you end up uh, getting the word out to everybody who's interested in this? Um, honestly, uh, we have considered Kickstarter, uh, Indiegogo like dozens of times. Ultimately, it's very clear that those uh, communities, they have a very specific uh, price range for their products, which I don't think we're a great fit at. So mm -hmm. our product is 899. Um, so what we've done is that we did everything ourselves. We pretty much leverage our social media and our following um, to get the word out. And we basically just show people what we can do. And uh -huh. you know, I've been posting demos and that got people excited. And we open a, a wait list at the beginning um, then we opened a pre uh, a pre order and we sold out really quickly. So uh, we just been leveraging um, the people who are passionate about this technology. You know the people that we know and our passion for it. And that's what we put out there. Awesome. And then hopefully sessions like this will bring more eyeballs, more awareness, and then help you attract uh, uh, the right kind of investors, or partners, developers. Uh, that being said, I'm going to hand it over to Alex to, to take over from there. And the rest of you, I think we're going to um, uh, take questions. So don't be shy to add your questions at the bottom, and we're going to get to it and um, uh, take it over, Alex. Awesome. Thank you, Madusha. Um, so uh, when we started working on mind control technology, right? With brain computer interfaces, we first needed to understand what is the cost of using technology today when it comes to our bodies, right? Um, so have you ever wondered how many hand gestures you do every day, right? Uh, whether you're a developer or you do some other type of work, how many times do you move your hands, you tap, you press, you click, you swipe, you scroll in order to just like use the applications that you use? Um, so we set out to learn and answer this question. It turns out the average person does these hand movements 10,000 times a day. And just think about that. That's crazy because that turns out to be 3.5 million half movements a year. So we can just use our computers, our devices, our mobile devices, right? Um, and that was super interesting because before you move your hands, your body, everything first starts in the brain. So by the time you already move, you made that conscious decision and your motor cortex already orchestrated the nerves in your body to be able to do that movement, but it all starts in the brain. So it turns out there are brain waves that are being produced by our neurons. And we have billions and billions of neurons, right? Um, and they activate and they produce electrical activity. And this electrical activity can be captured and can be also represented almost like sound wave, like music, right? Um, and research uh, researchers have found that you can actually split the brain waves into five major buckets uh, or frequency bands that go from like active thinking gamma, beta for attention, alpha for meditation, uh, theta and delta for more of like uh, drowsiness and dreaming stages. So we can quantify at a very high level the person's mental state, which is amazing. I'm Alex Castillo, I'm a co-founder at Neurosity. Uh, before this, um, I was working at Netflix and uh, I have the pleasure to work with many talented people, uh, also being part of uh, the GD program, the Google Developer Experts program. And before all of this, I just had a passion for designing and code, uh, you know, from age 15. So um, at some point in my career, uh, I partnered with my co-founder, AJ Keller, um, and we created Neurosity two years and a half ago, 
And I am so excited to show you what we've done, what we shipped, what we uh, have accomplished. Um, when we think about empowering the mind, we're really thinking about how can we use our brain to basically extend ourselves as humans, our capabilities when we interact with technology. And for that, we go back to the brain waves that I was showing you before, right? Remember that they have different frequencies and they map to different mental states. And that is awesome as a starting point. But ultimately, you need hardware to be able to capture this and to be able to leverage this and to be able to apply machine learning algorithms to it. So we prototype uh, probably hundreds of times in the course of the last two years. And right now we have released and shipped uh, the Notion. We're currently in version number two. This picture here is from Notion 2. And it is a eight sensor EEG uh, computer, basically. It has a 1.8 gigahertz CPU, uh, powerful enough to run all of the processing that it takes for us to detect different type of intents and subconscious metrics in real time. So um, I actually have it right here with me. And it's very simple. Um, I usually extend it like this and I just uh, put it on. I just make sure that all the sensors are making contact and I can feel all of them for the signal to be the best. And then after that, I'm like basically all set. Um, so um, instead of uh, telling you too much about this, I just wanna show you what we've been able to do with it. I'm just gonna go straight, give you a demonstration. Um, we believe in the web, the power of the web. So we have created this device to be web first, which means you can integrate it with any application, uh, web application, even with mobile application and desktop applications as well. But for the sake of this demo, I'm just gonna go ahead uh, and I'm going to go to um, a web application that we have published uh, to production and show you something that we can do. So going back to all those hand gestures that you can do, right? Uh, scroll was one of those. And we spend a lot of our time scrolling uh, so we can digest um, all the information that the web has to offer, right? When we're reading articles, pretty much when we're navigating, a lot of the time we're scrolling. So I'm going to go ahead and attempt to scroll without using my hands, but uh, everything is gonna be captured with this device that is going to detect the intent right from my moral cortex all the way to the web application that we're going to be doing and we're going to be able to scroll it with our minds so let's just do it all right so this this application is hosted in think to scroll.com uh that device i've already authenticated with and it's already mapped that whenever i think of swiping upwards with my right index finger it would detect that intent and scroll the page for me and i'll make sure that my hands are in camera so you can see that i'm not doing it with my hands um all right, we are further ado. Right, so this is our application here. You can see that I'm logged in. Uh, it says Notion A, uh, 9AA, I'm online. I have full battery right now. Uh, if I try to do it with my hands, I actually, it, it won't move, right? I'm trying to do this call with my trackpad here and my laptop. Uh, and then at the very top here, we have a uh, we have a progress bar. This progress bar indicates the probability of me thinking of moving my hand. Um, I did a training session uh, a while back, so I could do this. And right now, it, it, I might have to redo it with you, which is going to be a great opportunity so you can see what it takes to. So I'm going to go ahead and then just close this, go to my developer console. Uh, this is the application that we use. Um, to configure everything, to uh, access all the data. Um, and if I go to training here, you can see that I have a right index finger training. Oh yeah, so the training is a little bit old. I might have to redo a few trials. So I'll go ahead and do a few trials with you here. I'm gonna go ahead and click retrain.
All right. We have trial five. I usually do around 15 trials for the sake of this demo, these five different snapshots that were captured of me thinking of moving my right in the finger should be enough. So I'll go ahead and open my thing to scroll.com app again. You can see the progress bar moving right now. It's like very low probability. So I'm going to go ahead and think again to scroll. That's more like it. <laughs> so close. I have to pass a threshold of around like 75% for a, a given amount of time. Let's give it a one more try. I also like it to visualize as a time series. So I'll go ahead and try it here. And if I hit start, oh, it went up now. Okay, let's see. Okay, good, it's better now. Yeah, so that's it. So as you can see, the intent, when you think about the imagined thought, uh, is definitely not like 100% accurate. We are right now around 65 to 80% accuracy. Um, every, all the machine learning is happening on the device. I think it can be, uh, there are some good use cases uh, for things that do not require an accuracy that is very precise. Uh, I think we have still a ways to go to make it way more snappy and responsive. Um, and this is when tapping into the data from the subconscious can be also so interesting. So before I do that, I'm going to show you a couple of things I've been able to do with the same principle of thinking and, and, and imagine movement. Uh, here's a demo of me controlling a Sphero, let's see, with my mind. And in this video, the Sphero is being, uh, I have some code running that captures the intent from the device and forwards that intent via Bluetooth to the Sphero, which is this tiny robot that is pretty awesome to control. And recently I did a very different demo that I think is way better of something that we can do today. For example, I like playing the guitar. I was wondering, can I uh, control an effect of my guitar with my mind? Uh, traditionally, I use a guitar pedal that I push with my right foot uh, to control an effect such as the wah or the wah wah. And um, this time I replaced the pedal with a digital version of the pedal that I can control uh, via the headset. So I'll show you the video for that. Here we go. You can see the pedal to the right, basically moving up and down as I'm thinking of moving my right foot without actually moving my right foot. So that was a very fun demo. Um, ultimately, how we're helping people with this technology is with developer productivity. So our current offering is basically that going back to these brainwaves, um, we have intersected really well the attention brainwave, right? And what we're doing is that we are creating, we're basically driving uh, your music experience basically from your brain activity. 
So we came up with a focus via signature that gives you a value from zero to a one at any given time that you're using the headset. Uh, and with that, we are able to decipher exactly what music and what type of music uh, your brain is responding to. Very similar to how a DJ knows that people are engaged in dancing on the dance floor, we do the same thing with the neurons. And ultimately, we automate the whole music creation, creating playlists or in the playlist, liking a track on Spotify, for example, skipping a track. And all that is basically driven by your subconscious, which is something that we're super excited about. Um, it measures your productivity or your focus score from like a zero to 100%. Uh, it, it, there are different stages that it tells you exactly where you are at. So for example, if you find yourself in flow, right, very focused in the zone, uh, we are able to also dynamically uh, switch your do not disturb uh, settings so you don't get notifications when you are at your peak performance, which is very important. You get distracted and it can take you like 22 minutes to get back in the zone. Imagine this while you're coding and you're basically super deep into the call stack and you're trying to you know, uh, make that feature work, fix that bug, uh, and suddenly you get a notification or you get distracted by something. Now you can let your subconscious decide when you should be uh, paying pretty much. Um, and since privacy is so important, uh, we have created a, a very secure chipset from scratch. My camera looked like it froze. So I'm just gonna reset it real quick. Don't worry about it. Uh, you can still hear me, I'll continue uh, giving the talk. But with the M1 uh, chipset, we're able to encrypt uh, all the data and we're able to also not require for your brain waves to be sent uh, because we can process all of that and just send the main data. This is why privacy is so important. We're also super proud to be like the first device that requires authentication um, and authorization for you to access it. Looks like my camera is back. Awesome. So thinking about the different things that you've seen today, you know, scrolling, controlling uh, what a device release, a laptop, tablet, or phone, uh, controlling sounds that you're creating in real time, uh, controlling other machines, other robots like the Spiro. Uh, of course, this can apply to pretty much everything out there, including smart home. We have experimented with controlling lighting, um, uh, mental health. Um, already uh, a company is using our hardware and our SDK to treat insomnia via something called neurofeedback. So basically, it's like working out your delta brainwaves, the delta, uh, the brainwaves that you produce the most during sleep to decrease the symptoms of sleep. So this is something completely um, amazing because now all of a sudden you're able to start even basically programming yourself to be better, right? Um, and no wonder there are programmers that suffer from insomnia. So they're already better testing with some of our users. When it comes to entertainment, um, Maybe um, Netflix uh, understands more about what you uh, want to watch or what you're in the mood to watch. Uh, and I don't know if you've seen the choose your own adventure. Maybe instead of you having to decide di different path explicitly, you can let your subconscious and what, what option you are relating to the most in that time for it to just change the narrative completely. Same with video games. Video games can only take feedback as we push the controllers and there are some other ways as well, of course. But what if the video game that you were playing knew that you're not engaged and it can change certain things to get you back um, engaged in what's happening with the video game itself, right? Um, I think the future of um, all these things where really smart home, entertainment, mental health and gaming are gonna be super exciting and a lot of fun. And the BCA market, uh, it just continues to grow. It's a really surprising market size as of this year, 2020, is 1.3 billion, but it's projected that it's going to go to 3.7 billion uh, by 2027, which tells you already some of the trends that you can be expecting when it comes to brain computer interface market, right? So when you think about the current developer, I think there's going to be a new kind that is already emerging, um, which is the neural app developer. The application developer that uses uh, biological data 
uh, camera first again. Awesome. I'm going to restart it again. This is like a, an old computer, this camera here. <laughs> anyway, about the Neuro app developer, uh, we're going to see more of that. There are already people that are building products for the future and people that are, some of the ideas that I already mentioned, they're already working on it with our platform because we offer an SDK that allows you to program based on the user, right? So um, um, I'd love to show you a little bit of the code, right? I mean, um, if you think about web development, you know, you basically listen to like keyboard events and that's pretty much baked into the browser already uh, and buttons and clicks and all these gestures, but you can simply import our SDK for an NPM, um, create a variable called the mind, which I think is the perfect name for it, and just start accessing parts of the mind. For example, the scroll demo that I gave you, um, it just basically does a mind that kinesis. It passes the label that I previously trained. And then when you subscribe to it, it gives you events whenever you think, and that intent basically executes the scroll down. Uh, that is a very good example of demo. Uh, and this is not a simplified version. This is pretty much like the, the, the working code. Think about all like all the amount of UI that you wouldn't have to build because we're kind of skipping that whole feedback loop when you need to see everything to know exactly what you have to do. But once you see it, I mean, your eyes, all of your senses are already responding. At some point, we'll be able to tap to all that. Uh, I like this example because you tap into the focus metric uh, and then focus, you get multiple uh, times a second and it has an object that has a probability property that, for example, if it's over 75%, you can just disable the notifications. And this is you know, some of the code that we're already using in some of our app experiences. And we're big proponents of open source. We believe in it. Uh, our users love it. And it is very, um, we have so many different projects with example code. Our SDK, client side, Notion.js, the one that I showed you previously, it's all on GitHub. You can check it out. You can see the whole code. Uh, you can contribute if you feel like it. Um, and we're just very happy that we're starting to see also some collaborations from our users when it comes to open source uh, and seeing those new app developers already uh, join us. Uh, and we have a brilliant developer community. I could be more proud about the people that have created products already with our technology, even with the early versions of the device, Notion 1 and Notion 2, right? Uh, Charlie Gerard, amazing engineer, creative technologist, um, she uh, created, basically uh, integrated our device with the Dino game from Chrome. So if I come here, I'll show you the video uh, of Charlie playing uh, the Dino game from Chrome with their device. She built like a small uh, Node.js code to forward the command somehow to the browser. Check this out. Not bad, huh? Um, and then um, we have also here, let me close this. Uh, we're seeing, we just like 48 hours ago uh, published a demo. I had to include it in this presentation, but he probably is the first person who uses uh, his mind to uh, control a machine to make coffee for him. So let's see how he does it. I love the music, so dramatic. Nice cup. Look at his face. Uh, this is priceless. I mean, I know what it feels like to control something without like moving. And I know what he's going through right now as far as his feelings are concerned. And uh, it just, I, I, I can feel that as well. I'm so happy with this demo turned out. It's uh, so cool. And uh, for sure, he's going to drink it too. <laughs> Cheers. Um, so, yeah, I mean, our developer community is already coming with all sorts of ways for how things, how this technology can be implemented in the real world. 
And that's really the key. It's like this technology, EEG, has existed for almost 100 years, right? Um, but there's a reason why you don't see it out there, right? It's because uh, most of this technology really has been just designed to work in a lab, in a research lab. Uh, at Neurosity, we're making neuro apps happen in the real world, regardless of where you are. Um, so that is part of the big challenge. That is part of the architecture that we have come up with this technology and with this interface. But ultimately, it just uh, comes down to how can we use this technology to make people healthier, to make people happier, uh, and to allow people to get the chance to get themselves to know themselves better, right? So um, I'm just going to leave it here. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, yeah, let's just go to Q&A. Okay, Alex, uh, I took you off the stream very quickly. Your camera was frozen. If you can give it a refresh, that would be awesome. In the meantime, um, while he gets settled in, um, any questions that you want to ask Alex? I think this is an amazing demonstration. It would be, I know that this, the first few times I saw Alex present this, <clears throat> I got to see it in person and it was um it was really cool uh, especially the fact that they built uh the hardware and I know um for those who already know this space really well there's another um <clears throat> hardware unit that I've been using is called Muse but the interesting thing about what they what Alex um, ended up building was um it, it goes on top of your hair and it can be hidden and this can be smaller in the future you can cover with your hat if you want to. Uh, okay, Alex is back. Let me bring him on stage. There you go. There you go. So yeah, Alex, really impressive. Um, <clears throat> thank you. you so much for this. Um, as I was mentioning, um, I'm familiar with Muse. Um, talk a little bit about the hardware piece. And I think we got a few questions here uh, while we were presenting the fact that, I mean, you can put this on top of your head and you can still measure the waves, which is really impressive compared to everything else. Where do you stand when it comes to the hardware? Like how, how complex is it? Yeah, all right. So camera is really not collaborating. So I might just switch to a completely different camera here that doesn't look that nice, but it's definitely gonna work. All right, there, there you go. Yeah. So uh, when it comes to the hardware, um, major, like there's very specific things that are very important for us as a company. One is that, we need to access the parts of the brain that are going to give the user the best experience. For example, when you see that I was controlling things and scrolling, like it's because we have sensors uh, over the motor cortex, right? The region of the brain that is uh, responsible for planning and executing voluntary movement, right? So that's very important uh, for us to be targeting a different region of the brain to enable different types of application that tap into different parts of the brain. The other thing is that privacy is so important. So we had to basically put a whole computer computing module inside our device for this technology to be very reliable. Uh, for us to be able to do the machine learning on the device, it has never been done before, right? So we are running you know, JavaScript code and Python code inside the headset mm -hmm. that has a full operating system. That's something else, right? Our device is the only device that has an operating system on board that co directly communicates with the cloud. And when it comes to privacy, we require dedication. We do not openly broadcast Bluetooth signals because we don't believe that that is for the user's benefit, right? Like we hack so many of these devices out there um, and we've made it so we can offer people a good chance of having a private and a secure experience. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is what we've done. Uh, it definitely required to reimagine the hardware and to come up with what we think is the next generation of brain computer interfaces that are autonomous. They don't require uh, drivers. They don't require dongle. They don't require um, a specific, like uh, to uh, pairing with a computer. And we go directly to web applications, to mobile yeah. applications uh, securely. So, so let's talk about in that case. Obviously, this is going to help with the latency issues when you are communicating with other other um, uh, units. Correct? How how, oh. how how do you compare yourself compared to others? Yeah. So. What happens with Bluetooth, which is basically the standard um, from existing technologies, is that Bluetooth is amazing for late latency, right? And you mentioned that. But for, for bandwidth, that's actually the problem. We're sampling the brain over 250 times per second, which means that the amount of data that you will be sending would be too much for Bluetooth to handle. So Bluetooth stops dropping packets once in a while 
rendering the signal useless pretty much. We use Wi-Fi, which doesn't have any of these issues, uh, has an you know amazing latency and for bandwidth is, I mean, you know how much you can really download as far as data is concerned with Wi-Fi already. So uh, that has been our approach and our two cents when it comes to design and brain computer interfaces. Awesome. So let's take a few questions from our audience. Uh, <clears throat> Cairo 15 asks, how does it connect to the brain waves? All right. So the sensors that you have, that we have right here, hope you can see them well, right? Um, they have, they're coated with a very specific material that has amazing biocompatibility and that is able to sense the electrical activity produced by the neurons all the way through the scalp. So that is what it's called an electroencephalogram or EEG for short. It's just in hospitals already to detect things like concussions and seizures. Um, and that is how it measures the brain waves. And after that, it basically goes through our firmware, our operating system, and our SDK allows you to tap into this data. Uh, whether it's like your focus score, calm, raw data, if you really need to, but you don't have to, uh, and things like kinesis to control things with your mind. And after that, you know, um, we've experimented with so many other things like, um, I mean, you saw the guitar example, uh, the guitar demo, um, what our users have done with like the coffee machines and appliances, video games. Um, our main application at Neurosity is an application that uh, connects to your music streaming service and drives the whole music experience, like I mentioned. Uh, but it's amazing what your brain will tell the, the software um, for what music it basically is craving, right? Um, and I've, discovered so much music with this uh with our app so far um and our users are saying that you know nada out of 10 songs are like you know on point and they don't have to basically work the spotify app anymore they just let their subconscious drive the music and they get to code you know exactly in the mood and state that they want because music has that power that can get someone in a specific mood you can change you to lower or you know or make or increase your energy so we're leveraging mm -hmm. music as a whole um that's awesome so Kyrie has another follow-up question uh can it be used on anything or do you have to uh download the software on the device it's being used right so um right now um a lot of the applications are web-based so you don't have i mean i guess you you go to the website right which you're already doing if you're here for example uh specific things might require a specific like skills or applications that you can download um but ultimately you want to make it as simple as you put it on you configure it and if you want to run an app right like for for me to run the music app i go to music.neurosity.co and like you know it's all set then i don't have to download anything it's just i log in because you know you need to recognize who i am to give me access and the, that I have a device. And then after that, the experience takes over. Okay, I don't know whether I'm cutting in and out, but uh, hopefully stream is good. <clears throat> Alex, talk a little bit about um, uh, what kind of medical um, advancements can we uh, use this technology for? Or is there any industries particular that you are interested in looking into? collaborating oh, with, for example with medical advances i mean we build this so companies medical companies can build their neuro apps for example those new research that came out not too long ago uh from a university that they were able to predict epilepsy seizures up to one hour before they happened now think about that think about people who uh you know have epilepsy and that you know um might not have the option let's say to drive safely right and, and think about their family members. What if you use, could just get a notification on your phone, like, okay, for the next hour, um, limit your activities to something that, uh, you know, low risk or something like that. I'm pretty sure one of our users or one of the, our, our company partners will, will basically build that app, right? Mm. Um, if, if we don't get to do it first. Uh, we're two people company mostly, right? Uh, yeah. So we're already working very hard on the hardware to ship it for next year. We have pre-orders open right now. And as far as what I'm passionate about, I'm super passionate about epilepsy, having family members and friends with it, and depression too. So that is definitely, you might see some of uh, my work later, but 
we have a long way to go, right? I mean, uh, first we needed to create the hardware to enable these apps. And now uh, it's mostly about this, this software and the creativity and what people care about. Right. Um, good segue to the next question. I think you mentioned you were a two person team and uh, Aura, how long did it take for you to finally complete this project? Anybody entrepreneurs who want to get into hardware space, what, any recommendations, ideas that you can share with us? <laughs> I know there's hardware, a lot, but. Hardware is hard. Um, I think um, we've gotten to this point because, um, you know, myself and my co-founder, AJ, uh, we're both technical and we both complement each other really well. So AJ is basically the wizard of the hardware, right? And he's getting there, the chipset, and he's basically doing the, like pretty much everything that takes for us to be able to capture this signal, right? Um, he's also, you know, an amazing software engineer. Uh, and he works in the firmware. I focus on like the design of the form factor, the operating system, and you know, like the SDK. And, and we collaborate on all these things. And we, we basically, even if I don't know hardware, I give him my feedback. He gives he gives me his feedback on things that you know we, we can improve upon. And it's just it comes down to how much you care. I think when you care a lot, um, it doesn't matter if you fail a hundred times in a row. You know that next time it works, it's going to be completely epic. Um, yeah. So those who are listening in, please send in your questions. Uh, there's no such thing as a stupid question. I always say that. Uh, make sure to put it on comments or on the on the chat. Uh, we'll try to get to it as we uh, continue this discussion. So, um, so you probably so two of you trying to figure things out. Um, and since. The reason we like Google run uh, all these community programs is to get feedback, get connected with the right kind of people and like bounce things off and then figure out what you envision is what the rest of the world sees. Uh, how do you get about get around it? Like, uh, what, did you end up building your own community of developers or experts or what was that like? Or is there anything uh, we can do to help? Oh, well, thank you first. Um, what we've done is that we've been open to talking to anyone about anything related to this. Um, we created a uh, Discord, and I actually think I have a slide with the Discord. Uh, if not, I'll paste the link here. Um, but our Discord is, you know, awesome. People suggesting ideas, come for help, you know, with anything, whether it's apps, uh, onboarding the, the device um, using the SDK. Um, and then we also have our own, like, very small community of our top users, right? So um, we do have our own community, uh, very small. We have a, a Slack channel and uh, and yeah, and there's a chance for everyone to eventually get there, of course. And um, we jump on the phone with anyone, you know, we talk to everyone, we answer mm -hmm. the questions. If you go to our website right now, uh, there, 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 there is a chat at the bottom. You can talk to me basically anytime. I respond to anyone. It's just like really about listening to people. And as far as how you can help, I mean, uh, you have me here, so you're helping already and I appreciate it. The Google Developer Expert Program supports me, so, um, you know, it couldn't be better. I'm really grateful for that. Awesome. Um, uh, we got another question coming in from Jade. Uh, what is your dream for how this technology could be used uh, to help people in the future? Yeah, uh, many dreams, right? Um, one of them might include, um, you know, autonomous cars right now are getting better, right? Uh, in the meantime, that might not be an option for everyone, but um, there's still the issue where people have accidents due to fatigue. So mm -hmm. could this device, you put it on while driving, communicate to your car to like pull over and save your life. Um, honestly, my dream is that if this helps someone, you know, at all in anything, I'm happy. Um, but things like that, going to mental health and be able to quantify the way you feel, right? right. Um, depression doesn't happen over time, but maybe there's some trends that we're not able to detect ourselves, right? But maybe right. with quantifying our joy, we can see if it's turning up or down or sustaining. But if we allow ourselves to to be, to understand how our minds work, I think that's going to unlock so many possibilities. People who cannot speak maybe can use this to communicate. Uh, mm -hmm. People who cannot type maybe can use this to type. And a lot of these things already we're, we've been making progress towards. So I'm super excited for the next couple of years. And super excited about the people who get it early who are giving us the feedback who are coming up with all sorts of projects too that's the dream um 
let's talk about the the hardware itself do you see this is get becoming smaller more compact does it really need to be embedded into your brain or i mean i know that's science fiction but i bet i bet the the, the effectiveness is greater when you do that but um yeah do you see it becoming more compact or more powerful absolutely so we already have decreased the size by like 30 percent in our first uh <laughs> prototype and um by the way i'm pasting the discord channel here um but as far as size yeah it's going to keep decreasing it's going to keep uh getting faster um i mean obviously Neuralink, you know is doing invasive work um which as it, ha it has been amazing seeing what they have been able to do once they get better signal uh we think it's going to be very difficult to touch a billion lives with invasive technology and with surgery uh and when it comes to hardware upgrades we also believe that uh, there has to be a better way so um we think that these two invasive non-invasive are going to converge converge at some point but ultimately i mean in the next few years our device this is i mean right now even when i put it on sometimes i take calls with our, our users and i don't notice that they are wearing it uh for like 10 minutes because mm -hmm. like it just comes like when you're looking at straight it doesn't even look like it's there sometimes so, right depending on the, you know, like, mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, no, that that's that's really that's really interesting, and I think I mean we're we're a long ways from becoming Professor X, I'm guessing, but uh, you know, but, but we're getting, we're uh, getting, I'm pretty sure we are <laughs> getting there. eventually figure out how to move wheelchairs with our device for sure, mm. or even better, an exoskeleton. Uh, awesome. So we got another question from Leslie here. Uh, if I can put the question up. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Especially great uh, military applications you can think of. Uh, you mentioned Notion can uh, log in uh, for you. How does it recognize an individual? What does it map and makes a personal unique? I mentioned that you can log in. You log into your device as a person to have access to the data, right? But what you're saying is actually something else that is actually uh, you might see happen soon. Um, I'm, I'm not allowed to say what company, but my favorite of company uh, got a device and might be figuring out how to authenticate with brainwaves uh, to recognize the individual because we are all unique and there, are, and there, there will be patterns that are specific to the person. In, in fact, there are already research papers that have proven this before with the same technology. So it means it's basically a matter of code, who's gonna write the code uh, and how you're gonna get the app and the hardware. Mm. Awesome. Uh, we got another question from uh, Raphael here. Uh, how long uh, do you think before uh, we can control prosthetics as easily as limbs? <clears throat> hey, Raphael, thank you. Um, how long again, how long till we can control prosthetics? Prosthetics um, require a high degree of freedom. I mean, think about all the muscles, right? If we're thinking mm -hmm. about the, the arm and the hand, our hands have more muscles. Um, and act the, actually like part of like the bottom half of our, of our bodies and we have so much dexterity so that's going to be definitely tricky um but i think uh we will be able to get to that point in the next and i'm going to be conservative here probably the next five seven years uh with brain uh technology okay. there are some armbands that you can use that they track your nerves and i think that it's going to give you something closer to the actual nerve that was going to control the the arm some of them call it mind control because everything starts in the mind and in the brain. We believe it takes more than muscle activating and you have to tap into the motion system as well to be able to really fully uh, do something that is mind control. But I mean, the advancements in all the different uh, areas are gonna come together at some point and something really awesome is gonna happen. Hmm. Um. I wanted to ask uh, before we jump in on the next question. Uh, wait, it just popped up. Okay, let's ask this. Uh, how did you get your first prototype out? Uh, once you have an idea for a hardware project, where do you go from there? Especially uh, something no like this complicated. I think we touched a little bit early on, but. Uh... Uh, Notion 1 was our first version that we pushed. Um, we hand assembled every single piece ourselves in the basement during the holidays 2019. It was brutal. Um, it was so hard, but we know the system 
from top to bottom. We connected everything together. We tested everything ourselves. We cleaned everything ourselves. We designed everything, our harkets and everything. We packaged it ourselves and we shipped it personally ourselves. I have a video of the UPS uh, person that came in the truck to get the 50, the, the first 60 devices out um, on December 30th, 2019. So we did everything ourselves uh, with a lot of love and sweat. Uh, what's the what's the reliability? Was that an issue? Uh... Reliability of the actual hardware, like any first version. Of yeah. course, you know things could have improved. I know we uh, some uh, some users experienced that the device was overheating a little bit. Uh, they couldn't feel it, you know, while wearing it. But if you touch it, uh, like it would like um, you know uh, turn off. We fixed that uh, with an operating system update. So not too long from that being reported, you know, we we uh, improve our software to be more resource constrained uh, and performant, uh, and we fix that, which is amazing. Like we can, like it has an operating system that you can update and you can send it to people. Um, and since then, we have every month been releasing operating updates, operating system updates that have new features, you know, uh, new capabilities. Uh, just like your phone gets new capabilities, our device also gets new capabilities in the discord i put it in the private chat i don't think i can add comments here but uh madusha if you can put it there somewhere everyone's welcome ah there you go uh alex i think yeah I'm cutting in and out, um, but okay, I'm back. Um, let, let's talk a little bit about, I think we have a few more minutes left. Please send in your questions. We want to answer as many questions as we can. Uh, well, looks like we lost you for a second again there. Okay. I'm back now. I know. Yeah. I don't have Google fiber. So, <laughs> um, um, let's talk a little bit about like, what everybody else is doing. We, we you mentioned a little bit about in, how invasive, uh, um, what, what Elon Musk is trying to do and then how there are going to be limitations to uh, mass adoption. Um, and where do you see, what else can we look, what kind of other trends can we look into? And then the other thing I want to ask you, is, since we have a lot of students tuning in, what kind of skill set specifically should they pay attention to? Because this is going to be a next one yeah. of these up and coming industries, um, what should they pay attention to? Are there any things that they should learn uh, to be yeah. able to prepare? Um, if you want to be a neuro engineer or neuro app developer, um, you're probably one to learn machine learning, obviously. Um, DSP, digital signal processing. Um, at the end of the day, you're getting a signal from the brain. You have to decode it, you have to clean it, you have to be noise it, right? You have to transform it. So digital signal processing is going to be super important skill if you want to create new metrics from the brain. Uh, machine learning to create trends and classifiers, of course. Um, I would recommend TensorFlow.js. Um, I would recommend you know get amazing in with JavaScript and TypeScript um, because I think this is what's going to dominate the uh, the, the wearable market, in my opinion. Um, and then after that, it's going to be about you know um, uh, reactive applications and streams mm -hmm. and observables. So things like RxJS, uh, we run it in our operating system, we run it in our SDK. The the brain is an observable stream of thoughts, right? So working with streams is going to be very important. Uh, how you fork those streams into meaningful streams of data? Uh, how you fork those? How you combine them back? Um, and I would say those three things for now. Digital signal processing, RCS, TensorFlow.js uh, would be like an amazing combo. And of course, if you're curious, there are like an ocean of research papers on EEG. So read a lot about EEG. They're an amazing lecture series by Christian Koth on YouTube that would teach you all the fundamentals. There are a handful of uh, books that are worth it out there about EEG. Um, and you know, Follow our GitHub too. You're gonna to see everything that we're doing. Follow us on Twitter um, because we do post a lot of different things there. And I share my source code pretty much all the time. Every demo that I post, uh, you can see the code. 
Awesome. Maybe we should do a coding challenge uh, one of these days where you put something up and all the students can jump on and, and come up with it. Um, and those yeah. who are listening from the DSC program and a uh, great context for you to Alex is we run this uh, initiative called the solution challenge. So um, we encourage our students to find a problem that they're passionate about and then come up with a solution. Uh, obviously yeah. they can definitely leverage something like that, what you already built as an infrastructure and then find a use case that they can yeah. apply to it. Um, very quickly, you mentioned like, you're able to detect epilepsy or seizures before they happen. And now, I'm, 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 I'm correct me if I'm wrong. Um, we tend to do that with earthquakes. Now, if you were to do the comparison, is it similar? Like, the, for example, you de detect a pattern, you understand the pattern, and now you make an alert around it, build an alert around it. I'm pretty sure there are some parallels about it, right? Okay. Um, you first need a, a signal or a measurement, right, uh, for earthquake. Of course, I mean, it's different from brain signals, but ultimately you're talking about a signal and you're talking about gathering enough data to understand what the signal looks like over time, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I, I guess it's the same principle where you can apply, uh, you can collect your data sets and classify your data sets and train your data sets. Uh, so you get a probability uh, metric about it, um, you know, that research was, you know, it's, it's genius, it's somewhere out there online uh, in the form of a, an academic paper. So I would encourage people who are curious mm -hmm. to like go check it out. Awesome. Uh, Raphael asked another question. Um, where does most of the, the noise that needs filtering come from? Um, yeah. Is it more difficult to clean when people are in an emotional state? The filter comes, a lot comes even just like, depending on your location in the world, like your line noise, electricity, whether you have to filter oh. for those 50 Hertz or 60 Hertz, but our device take care of that for you, right? Uh, then you have the motion artifacts, you know, like when you do like eye blinks and jaw clenches, you can capture that signal. So, you know, there are ways to denoise that with understanding the movement from the body as well. Um, so motion artifacts, you know, uh, line noise. Um, and then um, that is where the most of the noise comes from and, you know, like motion. Um, and then it's difficult to clean when people are in emotional state. Um, after you clean the, the data, you have nothing else to worry about. It's just about understanding human behavior, how they move, how they behave, what they do, you know, blink. Um, um, and other than that, our device takes care of everything else because we filter out a good part of that. Our operating system is powerful enough for that. Uh, and also our hardware shielding as well, right? Mm -hmm. um, sometimes there's a lot of signal with Bluetooth and all that. That doesn't affect us at all. Um, so, um, I mean, if you're passionate about denoising, go crazy and then come work for us, you know? Or come work for us and then go crazy, like learning that. I, I was actually watching a talk yesterday about an amazing researcher that has an amazing work. They basically build a jig where uh, they use a gelatin head to inject the noise and understand how they can filter. Uh, it's, it's an amazing uh, thing out there. But uh, I, I do want to encourage people to be uh, also passionate about the actual application building, assume a good clean signal, which is where we're getting towards. Mm -hmm. um, and then just like be creative about how you want the data to benefit the user, you know, for their health, for their happiness. Mm -hmm. Uh, and for the utility as well. Okay, I got another question from the side. Um, is this tool available? Um, uh, can retrain the brain? Uh, for example, if somebody would have a stroke, um, then you can understand what's functioning, what's not functioning. And is there is there is this something that you um, looking forward to doing, or is there something that's yeah. possible doing? Yeah. There are papers about rehabilitation from strokes, absolutely, with EEG. There is a practice called QEG, quantitative EEG, mm -hmm. that ha has been happening for over decades now, over three decades now, and has proven to be successful to uh, balancing the brain waves uh, to decrease symptoms of anxiety, alcoholics, uh, alcoholism, addiction, um, depression, um, all sorts of mental conditions, right? Uh, at the end of the day is about the chemical imbalances, right? And how those brain waves, like some part of the brain, when you are experiencing different symptoms, it's because certain part of the brain is not generating en enough electrical activity or too much yeah. electrical activity. So um, they use neurofeedback to basically uh, get you down to a balanced uh, tune uh, state 
um, just like when you work out, you know, you can work out your brain, uh, you can right. tune your, your brain. And that's something that we're going to start seeing. Uh, Drowsy, our, 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 our partner, they're doing that with, um, with Insomnia, right? Mm -hmm. And they have an app, you use our device, you have an app, and then you can uh, train yourself out of Insomnia. So yeah, you're going to see a lot of that. I think I think there's going to be a great integration with all this drug discovery as well. I know there's a um, um, lot of uh, artificial simulations done between proteins versus the drug and how they react. Now we yep. can add this other layer of uh, feedback with uh, how the brain reacts to things. So super excited to looking and looking forward to it. Um, one last question. This might be a bloated one, but um, when you talk about data privacy, is there anything that you see where blockchain or something that's more decentralized coming into play uh, that can integrate, or is it just just an infrastructure play? Whoever wants to pick it has the option to do it, or do you see anything happening there? Yeah, for us, privacy starts from the intent of the user, right? Respecting right. always uh, of like, we don't save any data by default. If you want to track your data over time, you have to be explicit about it. You have to request permission to uh, some apps, you know, in the future will request permission, like permission to access your productivity level, right? And things like that. So it's about giving the user uh, all the power. We're already doing everything we can in the hardware. We, you know, encrypt everything. We have author uh, authorization, authentication, um, and our hardware processing is locally. So you don't need to send this to another right. uh, system to be making sense of that data. Yeah. So um, as far as blockchain and whatnot, I mean, um, I yeah, I, I can see some applications to it um, when it comes to blockchain and about basically having a record that you can you know really alter um, for medical purposes. Yeah, I mean, if there's a medical practice that wants to ensure that their data is definitely, you know, has a, um, has an un, unbroken, you know, chain of, of events that can be a useful application. Um, yeah, the world is your oyster here. Awesome. Um, Alex, uh, from behalf of all of us, I want to thank you very much. Um, I know it's a, it's a long weekend for you all and thank you for taking the time. Um, for thank those you for who, having me. Yeah. Thank and then too. those, yeah, those who are joining in, uh, I put the discord link for our channel. Uh, we're going to merge, uh, hopefully, with your server that we, we can direct more traffic and uh, get more um, eyeballs on your technology and get our students to participate. Um, for those who are tuning in who missed the uh, beginning, uh, we're running a Firebase uh, series starting tomorrow uh, with some of our DSCs taking lead. And we'll hopefully we can incorporate some of these concepts that you talked about, Alex, and maybe bring you for again. Uh, to get an update and showcase some of those tech that um, our students ended up building or anybody who else is curious to join. So that being said, uh, thank you again for tuning in for all of you and uh, looking forward to seeing you all again um, starting maybe tomorrow. Um, that being said, Alex, thank you so much. Thank um, you. Hopefully we'll, we'll get to hear from you again in a few, uh, few months. Awesome. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Take care. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye -bye.